Hi, Mr. Kane here, and we're going to look at a process called weathering this time around. Okay, it's due to water cycle actions and uh, the power of water in nature, particularly with rocks and uh, the landscape. So, we need to also look at the rock cycle as part of this. So, here's the whole rock cycle, but we're really only going to be focusing on a small part of it. We're going to be sort of looking at this bit here. Okay. What's going on in the rocks when they get to the surface? We should know that there are three kinds of rocks. Okay, we've got uh, sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous rocks. But we'll have more about that in some other video later on. This time we're focusing on weathering on the surface, and then we might get into a little bit about um, the erosion and transport part of it too, because the water's involved there. But this is the, uh, the main focus of this video. So weathering, yeah, once the rocks are on the surface, water and other actions are going to break them down from big lumps into smaller bits and smaller bits and smaller bits and carry them away until we get the sand on the beach. Okay, so rainwater, temperature and living stuff is doing things too, so we're going to look at that in more detail. Three types. Three main types we're going to look at. Okay, what have we got? Physical. Okay, so things are physically being broken apart. There's a big scree slope coming down the mountainside there. So, where are we? There's my little pen. No. So, chemical. Water gets into the cracks in the rocks and uh, filters things away. And biological, we've got living things doing the damage. So physical weathering, okay, changing temperature, causing the rock to break apart, and there's also pressure release and stuff like that as well, okay, and water helps. So we've got freeze, thaw, exfoliation, Morty ho. Freeze, thaw, crack in the rock, rain or water gets into the crack, okay, and at night time, imagine it freezes, and water is one of the few things that actually gets bigger when it freezes. Pretty much everything else gets smaller, but water gets bigger, and it can exert quite a, an impressive force when it does that. Okay, you maybe you've put bottles of water in the freezer and, let them f and the, the ice has popped the cap off. So that's kind of what's happening in the mountains. As the uh, ice gets bigger, it's in a crack in the rock, and it forces these cracks bigger, it gets open, and then the ice melts, and the water gets deeper into the cracks, and then it repeats, and away we go round and round again. So it happens up in the mountains, as you can see here, cracks in the rock, snow and ice. Then during a climbing trip earlier in the year, I took some more photos of snow and ice sitting in cracks, and it doesn't take much of a crack. It doesn't take much of a crack. We've got a little tiny crack right here, a little tiny crack. Water's just got to seep into that and freeze and you can see the, the snow sitting in here in the crack and you can see the sharp edges of things as it's being split apart okay so as the, the snow gets right in there and soaks in and it freezes it can cause quite a bit of pressure as it's forcing things apart and we get these sharp edge bits of rocks that start their journey down the mountainside exfoliation um, the surface layers tend to come off and it's often happened when rocks have been deep underground and they're finally made at the surface the pressures come off and the top layers come off like layers of an onion okay so commonly what happens with these big granite domes that form under the under the ground granite requires heat and pressure to form when the pressure comes off the outer layers tend to pop off like this here and over here you can sort of see um, on this one, how this is like a sort of an onion skin type of layer. You can imagine it sitting off, and then now for while this will just slide away. Here's the, you know, the surface layers here. You can sort of see how the, the sides are roughly parallel, and it's the pressure coming off, and the thing just expanding upwards, and the top outside layers popping off. I've seen it happen here in New Zealand. I've seen it happening um, in place in southern part of Stewart Island, there's a couple of mountains there called Gog and Magog, and they're giant 
granite domes and their top layers are peeling off like these are. Chemical weathering is a big process as well. Okay, rainwater simply chemically reacts with the stuff in the rock. The minerals in the rock reacts with water and we get new you know, chemical reactions happen. The same as you're doing a test tube in the lab but it's happening with rock and instead of being rock we've now got clay. Clay is soft, falls apart, rocks fall apart or as it says soluble salts, the rain simply dissolves the rock, dissolves the stuff in the rock. Okay, And if the water is slightly acidic this really helps but simple plain rainwater will do it as well being acidic speeds it up okay so most important types of chemical weathering solution so dissolving stuff hydrolysis water splitting it oxidation rusting it okay so dissolving stuff carbonation happens when they make fizzy drinks so Think of it when you open your bottle of uh, Coke next time, or your bottle of LMP, or whatever you Sprite, or whatever you're drinking. You take the lid off, and it fizzes at you. That's carbon dioxide being released from the solution. So it's got carbon dioxide dissolved in it, and carbon dioxide in the air dissolves in rainwater and makes it slightly acidic. In fact, the, your your bottle of Coke is more acidic than this kind of acidic rainwater, but. It's able to dissolve limestone. It gets into cracks and things like we saw with the water and the freeze thaw and it flows in and over it as over the years it dissolves away limestone. And we get caves and the formations inside the caves. So the stalactites that hang on the top, stalactites, okay, form so as the water drips off, as it's been come through and dissolved, it picks up some stuff, as it drips off, some of it evaporates as it drips and leaves a tiny little bit of rock behind, slowly growing stalactites and stalagmites, forming these beautiful, sometimes weird looking cave formations. Acid rain is a more harsher version of the uh, carbonation one, caused by pollution, sulfur dioxide, produces sulfuric acids. Nitrogen dioxide produces nitrogen, so nitric acids. And they are strong mineral acids and they happen, we get a stronger acid rain and primarily your limestone buildings are at risk but many rock types and we get lots of damage to uh, buildings, especially in, in cities and towns. So a lot of buildings were built using limestone because it was softer and easier to carve and put nice detail into it, but acid rain, it takes those details away. So acid rain reacts in the rocks, clay and salts, they simply wash away and we get some weird shapes happening. So this has been quite a detailed carving of a head, but you can see the pitting and loss of detail due to acid rain etching away the surface of the rock. Other weird formations, rain follows the weaknesses down through the cracks in the rock and washes away the weaker stuff there leaving weird shapes behind and uh, strange things happen. Some of that could also be caused by um, the physical action of wind blowing sand against it and rubbing it away, uh, vent effects they are called, but uh, this is more likely to be due to the rainwater acting upon it and slowing being a bit acidic, just etching it away. Oxidation, as I said before, rusting. So many rocks are iron rich and they simply rust in the rain. And the same thing, following the joints and cracks in the rocks, we get lines of rust. Rust is a bit weaker, the rocks fall apart slowly. Living things can also wear things away. Okay, so they're poking into cracks or wearing things away, but they're walking across it or running across it or sliding across it. Okay, so for example, trees put down their roots seeking the water that they need to have. As they grow, they force the rock apart. We've also got um, things that live on the rock, lichens, algae. 
and they produce mi minerals or chemicals that break down the rock that they use for um, their nutrients and uh, it slowly breaks down the rock as well. And then there's things like shellfish that actually bore their way into rock to find security and uh, protection. If you look at the seashore and watch limpets and things that live on the rocks, they seem to go back to almost the same spot at, uh, when the tide goes out. And you, you see that spot later on, it's actually a little worn spot in the rock that they fit into exactly to keep themselves nice and watertight. So, rocks and the rock cycle and weathering. Uh, we'll talk more about rock cycle later on, but I hope that uh, was helpful with things that go on with weathering.